Uh, so we did it. We made it. Uh, we're at my top 50. This is probably going to be a quicker video than some of my prior because I've already talked about all these players. And so just putting them in place now. But uh, first, I'm going to go through all the previous players I've ranked. I have my tier 1 of Delial, Doc Evil, Seto, Was Up, and Yojimbo. I think these are the five players where you can make a legitimate case that they, that they are the greatest of all time. Each of these players has a unique and clear case to why they are the best. Delial has the broadest achievement, the best results in the finals, and overall just the most winning. Uh, Doc Evil has this incredible unmatched short-term run, by far the highest win rate ever. Seto has the most time that my ELO ranking has him number one, and has this incredible breadth of results against all kinds of strong opposition. Was up has the highest win rates against different levels of opposition, against any tier of opposition. Was up has a higher win rate than other players while having a decent sample. And Yojimbo has the most championships, the most wins, an incredible win rate, an incredible peak where he wins four tournaments in five or six tries. Uh, just one of the absolutely absurd runs. I have put them alphabetically here rather than rank them explicitly because I am a coward who wants to avoid controversy. Uh, I do, of course, have opinions on how they'd rank, and they are heavily biased towards me, so it's probably better that I don't explicitly say it. Then at tier 1.5, we have Great Sephiroth. He's someone who I think very clearly belongs in tier 1. His numbers are quite close to a lot of players there, but kind of always that touch behind that makes him the clear 6th all-time. The one thing that really could put him in that discussion is if you value clan results really highly. In the clan data I have, he is by far the best clan performer ever, having won every single clan match I have on record and well ahead of the field. And so if you want to put value on that, that would be a way to make the case for him in that higher tier and give him an argument for being the greatest of all time. Uh, I couldn't find that when I was, I didn't find that when I was initially making these rankings, so I didn't have him in that top five. Uh, which would then be a top six, but I think he's either very clearly sixth, or you could have him somewhere in that top five. Absolutely tremendous player. Tier two, we have MC and Nightwish, the Polish brothers. You could put them in either order. You have Kamikaze, you have Koner, you have Slash of Time. Slash made a very compelling case that he should be seventh. He has the most championships of anyone here. I think he's the most finals of anyone here. He's just absurd number of deep runs. Uh, incredible player, you know, winning record against Delial, for instance. Solid record against Was Up and uh, Yojimbo and other players in that previous tier. And so I want to say for the tiers, this is how I ranked the tier. I think I stand by it, though as I said, Slash made a very good case. But if you would rank this tier differently, I think any ordering of this tier would be completely reasonable. It would be hard for me to think MC and Nightwish's results are different enough that I, they shouldn't be close to next to each other, but if you think this tier should be like completely flipped in order, I think you could totally reasonably defend that argument. Uh, this is just the order I came up with. If you think there are people who are in a tier and someone in a lower tier should be above them or something like that, then we have a point of disagreement. But if you would shake up the order of the tier I think there's lots of ways to put it that make a lot of sense. Tier 2.5, we have Sujiro. I put him in Tier 2. I think he does belong in Tier 2. I think there's some separation between him and the next tier. But looking at it more, I don't think there's an argument for him being 7th or 8th or 9th. I think it's somewhere, someone where you could order the five we just saw any way you wanted, and Sujiro comes somewhere after them and somewhere before anyone else, which puts him kind of in a spot in his own, much like Great Sephiroth. I think he played much less than anyone in Tier 2 we just saw, and so if he had played twice the number of tournaments he did, and had played a comparable number to the others in that tier, he would be firmly in their number, and possibly at the head of that group, but we just have a much smaller sample, and it doesn't quite get him there. So then we have Tier 3, and again, we've already gone through this, but we have Cookie, uh, incredible run in 2004 and 2006, Vid, who really starts his run late around 2011, Turds winning Vincent in 2008, Kaus both winning the first tournament ever, but also having this incredible comeback in 2008 where he won four icons the first time anyone had ever won four icons in a year. 
Sir Smokes, who I think was the player of the year of 2013, even ahead of Yojimbo, basically at Yojimbo's peak. Just an absurd run from Smokes. Diacon Entite, who was the only reason Yojimbo didn't win more, going 4-1 against Yojimbo, but also having these two tremendous peaks, one in 2012-13 or 2011-12, and one much earlier in like 2006 when he made a bunch of semifinals. Chickeny, uh, I think the clear best player to never win, having made three finals and putting up a very high win rate against really tough opposition. Dark Lord, who came late, but sort of looks like a Sujiro who played even less than Sujiro, but the win rates and the results against different levels of competition look similar. Dark Lord is someone where if they had played twice the time, they might be in Sujiro's slot, and if they had played more, much like Sujiro, they might be even higher. Karmazin, who is very much the doc evil of this group, you could put him much higher, you could put him a little lower, um, but played two tournaments, won one, quarterfinaled the other, and if you ever saw him playing open trade, just obviously tremendous player. Broccoli, one of the fastest players to ever win two tournaments, winning her first tournament in this uh, first site championship, and then coming back eight years later to win the ninth site championship is her first tournament back. Absolutely ridiculous, I think. One of the cooler skills she had that was quite rare and not tested by much was an incredibly talented closed handmaker, which was a kind of underrated skill that I think she had a phenomenal talent for and was very thoughtful about. Uh, Saif, who had this fantastic peak in late 08, early 09, and if you watch the recent uh, TTA tennis video, I think was arguably briefly the top player on the site in that period over fantastic players like Delial, Seto, myself, Yojimbo, the Polish brothers. Um, then we have Meta, the last player in this tier. Meta won one tournament and surrounded it with a bunch of other good results. Not a long run, um, putting him at the end of this group. And I don't have a ton of evidence outside the tournament results, uh, mostly laming on level four, which is, you know, something great Sephiroth did too, but not the most impressive thing on the resume. But a very good short-term run. And that's our top 24. And so I looked at about 40 more names, and I had to take 26 of them. And so there are going to be some that don't make it that we've talked about, but a lot that I've talked about in the previous few videos that will fill out the top 50. And looking through the names, I thought, here are 14 that have to make my top 50. And so I put those 25th through 38th, and that's who we're going to go through now. And then I looked at the remaining players and picked out 12 of them to be 39th through 50th. Uh, there are certainly players I cut that have a very good case for belonging there. But, you know, top 50 is really hard to make. It's a very strong group. And I wanted to make the group a little smaller so it was easier to talk about at one time. So we're going to start by talking about the 26 to 38 group, uh, or 25 through 38 Sorry, I distracted myself. Uh, my other computer fell asleep, and that's the one I have my notes on. And I talk slightly better when I'm reading from my notes. So hopefully I bought time for myself well. Not that my notes are very good. They're just some stats to keep in mind. So we now have Tier 4. I decided to go uh, down from 38th to 25th as a kind of count up. Um, so we're going to start with my 38th. Beast Day, so impressed with Beast Day's tournament win. He did lose in the quarterfinals, but he's the only player to ever beat Doc Evil. Beast Day, the downside to his case is he has a lower win rate than anyone else in this group overall tournament win rate, but a phenomenal win rate against other winners, 3-0 against other winners, and really impressive results against the better players he faced, and not very impressive results against the weaker players he faced, which makes for this weird short-term resume, but his win is so impressive, I think it's enough. He had to be in the top 50, simply for being the only person to beat Doc Evil, and also for being a tournament winner. But overall, I think, kind of stands out as, here's someone who performed really well against the best, and has a lot of kind of early exits in the other tournaments they played. Then we have Grat, and I felt a little bad putting Grat this low at 37th. I felt like Grat belongs higher, but so many people had good resumes, I couldn't get there. Grat's someone who kind of everyone knew for a long time was here's a tournament winning quality player, never got there, got multiple semifinals, um, 
really high peak in strength, I think, really consistently near that peak. Just every tournament putting in just good results, and when he lost, it was to good opponents. The thing that kept Grat from being higher was a lower overall achievement score of other people, just had more deep runs. And Grat, you know, if you're consistently putting in good results, that sometimes means like round threes and not grabbing those icons. And other players just got more icons and more deep runs. Uh, then we have Midas. So Midas is someone who I think probably peaks lower than Grat and takes a while to get good, so certainly isn't as good on average as Grat was, but does end up achieving significantly more over time, making, I think, multiple finals, having a bunch of deep runs, and just really becoming a clearly very strong player, one of the top five or six on the site maybe in 2013. And then we have Unfixable, and Unfixable is one of those short-term winners that won one, but even with playing so little time, got a peak rating higher than any of these other three, playing less time than all of them, uh, reached the number one in my rankings, which very few players have done. You know, if like eight or nine players have done it and you're one of them, even if you did it early before there were high ratings established, it is such an impressive feat that uh, I think Unfixable's record stands up. Because also, the ratings, you know, take time to achieve. One of the things I like about ELO ratings is you really have to keep putting in results. If someone has one really good result, that can get you a somewhat high rating, but it's probably not going to get you a top rating. And so when someone does get really high ratings, like Doc Evil or Karmazin or Unfixable or Virgil, who we'll see in a bit, um, from these very limited results, I think it really stands out as impressive to achieve a higher rating in less time than any of these other players played. So now we move on to the next group, um, and we have Jadat and Tezuka, the two Finnish superstars of the site. I went back and forth on the order I was going to put them, because I really wasn't sure, because they had very different resumes. So I think Jadat peaks higher. I think his finals in Eris and the tournaments he had after that are a higher peak than Tezuka ever gets. And I think Elo, which thinks he has a slightly higher peak, underrates Jadat more than it underrates any other player. Because the way Elo works, and I don't want to get too into this, but the order of your tournaments kind of matters in some weird ways. And usually it's not a big enough effect to matter. But Jadat's bad tournaments, and then his best tournaments immediately after all bad ones, and then his good tournaments after his best, is the worst order you could have if you want to have a high peak. So I think more than any other player, just looking at his peak rating, which is very good, which is uh, 2162, as we mentioned in the video I talked about him, I think underrates him more than it underrates any other player, and Jadot has a clearly higher peak than Tezuka. But Tezuka's average rating over his time on the site is 50 points higher, which is a real lot, and he spends more time in the top 20 on the site, though Jadot spends more time as a top 10 player, Tezuka has more overall achievement, Jadat spends a lot of time not performing well at the latter end of his career, and his overall win rate of 53% is lower than anyone else here. I said Beast Days was the lowest in the group. Actually, Jadat's is even lower. While Tezuka's at 66 or 67% is like the, sec the highest in the group besides the short-termers, like Unfixable. But of any long-termer, I think it is the highest in the group. Yeah, it is. And so we have someone with this really high win rate who played for 10 years at this steadily really good level versus someone who peaked really high and was poor beforehand and then was really good around their peak and then was poor again after. Who do you rate better? And I really don't know. And I think it would make sense to rank Tezuka higher. I kind of, I came up with people having such awe and... Um, so impressed with Jadot's play, it's hard for me to have him below Tezuka. I think they're both great. I think they're really different. You could order them either way, and it kind of says what you value in a player. Is it long-term performance, or is it this really compelling strong peak with a finals and a seven-rounder, not just a six-rounder, and really good results around it, but no other good results? Then we have Ulti, and Ulti basically didn't play many tournaments, you know, two or three tournaments, but made two finals in very little time. 
and that's enough that their achievement score is on par with lots of other people in this group. But like Jadot played 30 plus tournaments, Tezuka played 20 plus, Midas played 30, Grat played 25 or 30, you know, somewhere in that range. And Ulti played like three and has just as much achievement, I think, as these other players do. And so while there isn't that kind of longevity to convince me, yes, they were a top player. You know, they did it at one moment in time. It was very early in the site. I think there was clear improvement afterwards. I think you can start arguing at 2006 that the site has reached its kind of peak talent, though I think it came later. But I think you can't argue beforehand that it had, and Ulti came before that. But the overall achievement in such little time is so high that even without winning a tournament, I put Ulti 32nd. That brings us to the next group. Uh, interesting group. I don't have kind of a through line through it. Mafi Josie, always in the semis, six semifinals, tons of quarterfinals, just such a steadily strong performer. A lower peak rating than actually anyone else in this group, but that's because he achieved the peak rating early on when ratings were a bit lower, and also stayed really close to the peak rating the whole way, has a really high average rating and a relatively low peak, suggesting this really consistent never quite transcendent but always one level below that uh, rating ends up spending just a ton of time in the top 20 more time as a top 20 player than anyone else here whenever Mafi josie played there was no chance that he wasn't like a top 20 performer on the site and a real large chunk only narrowly beaten out for most time in the top 10 of anyone here as well tons of achievement really high overall win rate you could certainly argue Mafi josie higher the thing that puts the other players here higher for me is that kazik has multiple finals and i think a higher peak kefka has a finals and i also think a higher peak too and virgil played a very small number of tournaments but has a really high win rate after kind of the um the Doc Evil and the Karmazins, if you're really high on those, Virgil is the next player you should look at as a big what-if. Like, only plays four or five tournaments, does tremendously well in those tournaments, has a really high win rate. You know, Doc Evil and Karmazin have by far the two highest win rates ever. Virgil is a bit behind, not number three, more like number six or seven. But like, right there with like Nightwish and Great Sephiroth just didn't do it near as long. And if you believe Virgil would have kept it up, then you think Virgil is an all-time talent. And Virgil, in fact, hits the third highest peak ELO rating of anyone in this group, and did so really early, did so in like 2005-06, when ratings were generally lower. So did so well in their limited tournaments that it's it was hard for me not to put Virgil even higher, even though only plays one tournament, uh, only wins one tournament, only has that one icon but, you know, was making round fours, which could have been quarterfinals, but this was the era of seven rounders. So I put Virgil 30th, and I put these other really steady, good performers around it. Kha'Zix a little inconsistent, but the two finals runs, and a couple wins against Seto, which is just a fantastic thing on the have on the resume. Kefka, this early, incredibly high level. I think if you look at the early greats, Kefka stands out. Mafi Josie keeps it going a bit longer. I would be happy to flip where Mafi Josie and Kefka are, but I think these kind of belong in the same range as here are some of the very best players to never win that all have multiple really deep tournament runs. And Virgil um, doesn't really fit that group, but has this tremendous different set of results. And our top three, for the top three to not make my top 24, but they do very narrowly miss are Bren, Piggyman, and Jaws. And I feel pretty good about these three as the top of this group. Overall, I thought Bren had the most overall resume. Um, he comes very close to being, you know, a top player in the world. He peaks at number four in my ELO rankings, but in my recent tennis rankings, he briefly takes the number one slot, which I don't think anyone else here ever did with this fantastic run late 2005 into early 2006, achieves a really high peak rating, not top of the group, Piggy Man and Jaws at the two highest, then Virgil, I think Bren's fourth in the group, but he's high on peak, he's very solid on average rating, he's high on achievement, he has a tournament win, which of course is a strong point in his favor against Piggy Man and Jaws, 
And I just thought overall has the best kind of, his resume is good in every department. There's only one real knock on his case, which is he is 0-5 against other winners. Never beat another winner and has lost a bunch to other winners. Um, but I think just overall looking at all the kind of different elements of the case I was looking at has a really consistently strong case. Uh, has a really good eight tournament peak. I think the best eight tournament peak in this group, unless Piggy narrowly squeaks past him. Thought so, overall best resume, probably Bren. But Piggy Man, I think, does peak higher. I, uh, Piggy Man has this run where just semifinal after semifinals gets three or four of them in like a five or six tournament span. You know, Mafi Josie gets more semifinals total, but it's much more spread out, suggesting more consistent high level, but not a super high peak. And Piggy Man gets the clear highest rating in this group. Second is Jaws at 2203. Only Jaws and Virgil break 2200, except for Piggy Man, who's at 2238, which is a comfortable lead on the group. He spends the most time in the top 10 in my rankings. And he has a really high win rate for the group, comfortably over 60%. He's also one of the few to be in the 99th percentile of rankings at his peak of anyone who'd ever played. And so that's an impressive feat. The others to do that in this group, Beast Day does it when he beats Doc Evil. Uh, Virgil gets there on his run. And Mafi Josie actually gets there. No, Kefka gets there. No, nope, I'm reading the chart wrong. It's uh, Virgil and it's... Yeah, Virgil and Kefka get there. But Piggy is one of the very few to reach 99th percentile rating on the site. Uh, the downside to Piggy's case is he never gets a win, and he actually never makes a finals either. And that was enough for me to not put him in that top slot of this group. And his overall achievement isn't quite as high. He didn't keep it going as long, but the peak is so high, I wanted him to be here. And then Jaws 27th. Jaws is another very solid case. He's tied for highest achievement in the group. He also does hit that 99th percent. No, it's 98.8th percentile on ratings, but he has 2203 rating, he breaks, breaks 2200, very high average performance, a lot of time in the top 10, a lot of time in the top 20. His highest world rank is 6th, which is, of course, very high. Very steady case across the board, does make a finals, unlike Piggy Man. And the thing that really impresses me about Jaws is he basically never lost to anyone who wasn't really good. So he has losses to players like Kaus and Sujiro and Belial, and that's kind of the players he lost to. And maybe some other players in this group have beaten him, but it's a resume where just never losing games to players who weren't really good. Overall, really solid resume. Doesn't peak as high as Piggy Man, doesn't get the win like Bren, doesn't make as many finals as Kha'Zix, but overall, third in this group felt right to me for Jaws. And I did feel like Bren, Piggy Man, and Jaws were pretty clearly the top three in this group. And you could argue for Kha'Zix, you could argue for Virgil, you could argue for Kefka or Mafi Josie. But I think these three do stand out once you start really diving into it. So that's 25 through 38, and we now have 39 through 50. And I'm going to reveal them in the opposite order, sort of a countdown of who makes the top 50. Now it's more interesting, not necessarily who ranks highest, but who's making the cut. So Reaminator was my first to make the cut here. Overall achievement is on par with the best of the last group. Huge achievement. Same for Patriot. These are two players with a ton of achievement. They did do it at the end of the site when tournaments were often shorter but they actually were getting most of their points before tournaments got that much shorter, and I think should get full credit for it. They're both players with low win rates for the group, but also really good runs at their best. So they spent a while not being elite, and then they, they hit that higher gear, and so lower overall win rates, more total achievement. Amo was sort of in that group as well, um, these are all players peaking in the mid or low 2100s. Ray has the highest peak at 2152, which is on par with players we've seen like Mafi Josie and Tezuka, though less consistent performance than they had. Uh, Patriot Nemo, a little lower on their peaks, but a lot of achievement, all with finals runs. Patriot with multiple finals runs to his name. And then there's Kazdan, who I think peaks the highest of this group. Kazdan peaks at 2175, which is a very high peak. But he does so at a point when more people have achieved higher ratings, 
so it doesn't give him much time in the top 10. And he also doesn't actually get that many icons. He's someone so consistently putting up just a 60% win rate over time that he's always high rated. He's always a very respectable, tough opponent, but he doesn't get that many deep runs, doesn't come, you know, that close to winning stuff or doesn't have a big streak of icons. And it's hard to put him higher, though I think there's an argument that he's a better player than the three above him or at least was better over time. Maybe they were briefly better at their peaks, but most of the time they played, I would probably take Kazdan. I just think the others achieved clearly more and deserve credit for it. So then we have Aurora, another fantastic short-termer. Um, just one of those players who plays for a very brief time, gets a ton of icons for how much they played, is basically getting an icon in it. Like, gets an icon, I think, in three of four tournaments they played. It's just a crazy run, and no, they didn't achieve quite as much as the others there, but it's something where, like, even if their next five tournaments they went out in the first round, they'd still have a pretty impressive win rate, and they reached a high enough rating that they have to be here. Then we have Dream Virus, who I didn't know what to do with, because Dream Virus, in the end, only has three quarterfinals, which is very low overall achievement for this group. You know, people like Reaminator have, like, seven or eight icons, and Dream Virus only has three icons. But the thing is, Dream Virus was... And they're all quarterfinals. None of them are further than that. But Dream Virus was doing it in the era of seven-round tournaments. So quarterfinals is making round five, which are really deep runs. And Dream Virus is a bunch of round four runs that just would normally be a quarterfinal or further, depending on era of the site. But at the start of the site is not even an icon. But the overall win rate, uh, beating really strong opponents peaking at fifth in the world and spending a ton of time in the top 10. I think there's a good argument for Dream Virus to be higher, but the failure to win more icons was what kept Dream Virus in 44th. Torian in 45th, really solid open player, doesn't particularly stand out there, you know, uh, but grabbed a closed tournament win and that rocket, rocketed them into the top 50. Without that win, though, their open resume would still look really solid, and they'd probably be somewhere around 60th to 65th for me all time. But the winning a closed tournament rockets you forward and gets them to 45th. And then Bryce in 46th is another just dominant short-termer. Again, I've talked about all these players. I know I'm repeating myself, just trying to sort of justify my thought process on the ranking. So Bryce doesn't play long enough to get higher, but the win rate is so high in such little time. You know, this is a Virgil-like resume, but without the win, but with an even higher win rate, you know, what do you do with that? I don't know. It's hard to take someone who only played two tournaments and really judge where they belong. And I've tried to be open to them being really high. I have Karma's in around 20th all time. Doc Evil played three, and I have him in the top five. Bryce, just two or three tournaments, but fantastic showings in both, and beating good players. She's one and one against elite players, or two and two against elite players. I think, like, a loss to Sujiro, but a win to Kamikaze, or like a win to one and loss to the other, where really proving they're running even against the best of the best. And then we have the last four players to make my top 50, and they are... So we have Demonic, who I think Sadly, the site lost too soon to World of Warcraft, but really good player in a limited amount of time. Not that high in ELO rating, but the achievement score, despite limited time played, is ahead of most of the other winners we've talked about. You know, the achievement score is actually slightly higher than Bren even, um, on a really fantastic Rhinoa run, but not enough time to really impress in single-player open, and a low overall ELO rating keeps him... Uh, lower because in single player open results he just doesn't have the results of anyone else in my top 50 but an incredible Rhinoa run knocking out fantastic teams they knocked out Delial and Seto they knocked out I think Great Sephiroth and Yojimbo or MC and Knight I mean they knocked out insane teams and he ends up winning that tournament with Slash of Time and an impressive enough run to get him 47th Suikoden in 48th has basically one tournament win and no other good results, but the one tournament win is a pretty good win, and despite no other single-player tournament results, one of the best clan performers ever. 
and I was thinking of Suikoden not making my top 50, but I kept coming back to a just really impressive clan run, and that brought him up to 48th for me. Yevon in 49th, I wasn't super sure about, but a high peak, pretty good um, overall achievement, but not near people like Rey and Patriot and Demonic and Amo. But, you know, not that far behind Kazdan and a bit ahead of Aurora and Dream Virus and Bryce. But having played a lot longer to get it. But a steady performer, and I really wasn't sure who should make these last slots. And I thought Yevon probably peaks a little higher and is a little steadier than the other people in contention for the last few spots. And reaches a peak rank of 6th on the site, which was really high for the people remaining. You know, people like Aurora got up to second, but most of the people remaining are people who were never or very rarely in the top 10, and Yevon peaks at sixth. It's really hard to make the top 10 at any given time. And then our last player for the 50, uh, there were a bunch of players really close, and I kind of ended up going for someone I enjoyed his strategic articles and wanted to give credit. But Homer has one of the highest win rates remaining, he won 63% of his tournament matchups, and a lot of the people we've just gone through are in the 50s. And Homer is comfortably over 60, you know. That's higher than Bren, that's on par with Piggy Man, that's a little behind Tezuka, that's ahead of Jadat, that's a touch behind Mafi Josie. So his overall win rate is on par with some really impressive names we've been seeing. But he only has one deep run, he has one semi-final. He's, his peak is good, but not outstanding for this group. His overall performance is very steady, um, but his achievement is kind of low. He only has one semi and one quarterfinal. I think overall, he's a good player. He has a win against Great Sephiroth. I think he's good enough to be here in the top 50. I could have given this last lot to a couple other names. So if you're watching this and you feel robbed, imagine you should have gotten that 50th slot and I robbed you. So I would give honorable mentions, but I do think I'm going to make a top 100. In fact, I thought I deleted this slide, so let's move past it. So here's a chart of just my top 50. Again, if you want to disagree with in tiers, um, I probably have no argument with you. Like if you think Slash should be 7th. Ooh, I moved Slash here. I didn't I meant to change that, and I spelled Kamikaze wrong. So uh, this list is actually a little different because I meant... Hmm, my bad. Uh, Kamikaze should be 9th, Koner 10th, and Slash 11th. Otherwise, this looks like I didn't mess up the order too much, though Kamikaze should be spelled right. But here is my top 50. I'm sorry, I, uh, I typoed there. And just wanted it all in one place to be looked at. I'm sure there will be some disagreement on this. I'd love to hear it. Uh, I tried to go kind of by the numbers, but of course, I like some people, and I tended to be forgiving or supportive towards them in the rankings. And there's also people I never knew or never got to see play, and I really tried to credit a lot of great past players, players like Bryce and Aurora, and people from way before my time, and looking at the numbers and being sure to credit, and Virgil, who to, cr to credit people that I never saw play, but it's very apparent or very good. So that's my top 50. I think I will do a 51 to 100th. I'll do it in a lot less detail, and then I'm going to stop. With uh, just under 800 tournament players, the top 100 is kind of the top 13% of players, which seems a, a good amount to cover. Covering more than that feels like I'm just kind of covering everyone, uh, but covering that feels like it's still a really elite, strong group. Given that there were, you know, I know there were well over 100,000 TTA accounts, but I'm assuming a lot of them were second accounts or clan accounts and other stuff, or people who just played a very short amount of time. But if we assume about 100,000 unique accounts, this is the top 0.1% of players. So making this top 100 or being close to it is, you know, an incredible place among that. If we uh, compare to how many copies FF8 sold, this is the top 0.001%. And, of course, going beyond that is getting a bit silly. But I think a top 100 would be fun to do. I'll still be missing some great players, but I'll get most of them. And that's it for my top 50. I, I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope you agree with most of my calls, and uh, there were some fun memories and names to be like, oh yeah, that player was really sweet. And I guess that's it for my, for my top 50.